President, the Senate is now several weeks on from the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act. This legislation is transformational, and it's going to improve the lives of millions. It is a big dose of more affordable medicine, cheaper energy bills for homeowners and our businesses, the largest investment in fighting climate, and a crackdown on tax cheats, wealthy tax cheats who rip off the American people for billions of dollars every year and ensuring that corporations pay a fair share. I'm very proud to be able to say that the vast majority of this bill came from the Senate Finance Committee majority. Our team collectively spent thousands and thousands of hours developing these proposals, building support for them under zero margin for error, and guaranteeing that they could pass under the challenging Senate rules. Senate Democrats spent a full year debating what would go into the bill before it finally came together, but the dedicated staff at the Finance Committee began its work long before that. Several of the most important provisions of the bill go back more than a decade. So I want to spend a few minutes making sure that committee and personal office staff, as well as the incredible team at the Joint Committee on Tax, Congressional Budget Office, and Legislative Council, understand how much the Senate appreciates them. I'm going to shout out a few specifics to Senate staff, and I'd like to really describe how some of the most important issues actually got into the bill. Tiffany Smith, for example, leads the best and hardest working tax policy team in public life. In fact, she was instrumental in working with the President and the Senate and Senator Warren on working on their very important minimum tax with respect to corporations. The Clean Energy for America bill, which passed the Senate Finance Committee in the middle of 2021, made up 90 percent of the final climate package that we dealt with here in the Senate. It meant that for the first time in American history, we'd in effect set aside the tax code and say that for the future, the more you reduce carbon emissions, the bigger your tax savings. And none of it could have happened without a young staffer named Bobby Andres who day after day for years reached out to every member of the Senate on both sides of the aisle, made himself available so that we could build a technology-neutral, science-driven, market-oriented approach that is going to make it possible for us to reduce carbon emissions significantly by the end of this decade. It simply doesn't happen without this dedicated young man, Bobby Andres. Chris Arneson, John Goldman, Sarah Schaefer were instrumental in going after the tax loopholes that allowed massive, profitable corporations to get away with paying little or nothing. Adam Carrasso and Eric Lopresti helped to make sure the IRS had the resources to go after wealthy tax chiefs who skip out on paying what they owe. Had a lot of debate around here about taxes. Working people, for example, in Maine, pay taxes with every single paycheck. That's not the way it works with the wealthy tax cheats. And Adam and Eric focused on policies that would allow us to ensure they pay their fair share. Drew Crouch contributed tax policy help on prescription drugs. Rachel Kaus put in extensive work in developing the billionaire income tax. The president, by the way, has a billionaire minimum income tax hasn't been enacted fully yet, but I think it's well understood that everybody in America has to pay their fair share. Grace Enda assisted on the clean energy tax policies and more. Ursula Klossing supported the tax team and made sure we were ready for the floor debate. Arthur Shemitz and Melanie Jonas also supported the tax team's hard work. One other point about the Finance Committee's majority tax team. If anybody out there mistakenly believes that it is easy to offset legislation passed in the Senate, the reason they might think that way 
is because our incredible tax team somehow made it look effortless. The truth is it takes a ton of hard work. Patricio Gonzalez, a member of our investigative team, has been digging into the tax practices of some of the biggest drug companies. His work went a long way to convincing key senators that our corporate laws needed reform, our corporate tax laws. Ryder Tobin, a number member, another member of the investigations team, contributed to that work and made it possible for us to survive the grueling floor debate, as did Madison Moskowitz, Claire Caliban, and Bonnie Million. Healthcare. When it comes to drug prices, Big Pharma had had a stranglehold on the United States Senate for way too long. They used that ban on negotiation and guarded it like it was the holy grail. Well, of course, everybody wants to negotiate. That's the way it works in our economic system, a free enterprise um, system. We were able to lift that curse, and we were able to win negotiation. Sean Bishop and the Finance uh, Committee Health Team took on Big Pharma. Anna Colton Beck, these two in particular showed that people, the seniors and consumers all over the country, can beat the biggest lobbies in the country, and none of them are bigger than Big, big Pharma. We made other important uh, changes. Protection in Medicare Part D, a $2,000 annual out-of-pocket cap on medications and price gouging. Raghev Agarwal made a huge difference there. And by the way, Mr. President, the penalty on price gouging kicks in in just a few days, October 1. That was because the Senate finance team insisted on it. When families in Oregon and across the country are getting hit by prices, even DeGoff worked on making sure there would be more help in the Affordable Care Act for those families trying to afford their coverage. That's going to save people hundreds of dollars a year, a family of four, with the help with those ACA premiums, some of them are going to save those families of four up to $2,400 a year. Peter Feist worked on capping the out-of-pocket cost of insulin for seniors at $35 a month, another huge saving. And Liz Durbin expanded Medicaid coverage uh, for adults for vaccines. Now, a lot of people pitched in on this whole um, system known as the bird rules, a extraordinarily Byzantine, complicated set of processes, and it included Liz Durbin, whose legal acumen was invaluable to help us navigate the bird rule, Peter Feist, Kristen Lundy, Kimberly Lattimore, Mary Ellis, Daniel Whittem, all from the health team were hugely uh, valuable. And on the trade side, Sally Lang and Virginia Lenahan helped with the clean energy provisions, which of course, we hope to get our clean energy all across this country, and a lot of people around the world are going to want to buy our clean energy uh, as well. When it comes to the bird rules, the point man on the Finance Committee is our inimitable counsel, Mike Evans. Uh, the whole thing uh, comes crashing down if you don't comply with the bird rules. Nobody in America, Mr. President, is more skilled or experienced than Mike Evans at making sure that you have navigated this procedural gauntlet here in the Senate known as the Bird Rules. Opposing counsels somehow, when they see Mike a coming, end up weeping because when he enters the room and he's got his stacks of paper in place, we know that the Bird Rule, which is arduous work, Mike approaches with humor, with grace, with skill, and a track record in terms of winning that is unparalleled. He's a valued member of our senior leadership team who put years into this. I want to thank him, Jeff Michaels, our chief of staff who has been with me throughout my time in public service, who gets the intersection of politics and being able to find the votes better than anybody anywhere, our inestimable uh, Chief at the committee, Josh Schenkman, Sarah Biddleman, John Dickus, Isaiah Aiken, they guided finance through setbacks and struggles to get the bill um, done. Finally, um, some wonderful people 
in the communication space, Ashley Chapital on tax and investigations, Taylor Harvey on health, Ryan Carey, who can actually put complicated political issues in English, and M Emily Zonla Hostetler, our digital director. The IRA dealt with some very complicated policy issues. We've taken on some very powerful special interests, and these communications folks were expert in being able to take these complicated issues, Mr. President, and relate it to people at their kitchen table in Maine and Oregon and across the country. Finally, I want to thank the wonderful people at the alphabet agencies, the Joint Committee on Taxation, called JCT, led by Tom Barthold, the CBO uh, with Director uh, Phil Schwegel, Senior Legislative uh, Counsel uh, that helped us, Mark McGonigal, Jim Franson, Allison Otto, and Vince Gianni on health policies, John Getchus, Kelly Thornburg, Ruth Ernst, and Phil Lynch. And we also want to thank the Senate parliamentarian and her assistance. You know, you're never happy with all the calls that the parliamentarian makes, but you believe, but you can always believe that the parliamentarian is very fair and even-handed. Mr. President, under normal circumstances, I have a bit more to say, but I think we're right on the time when colleagues uh, apparently at the desk have places to go. I'd ask unanimous consent that the rest of my remarks go into the record, and I yield the floor.